You're watching Dominion Television, your home for faith and kingdom training. Dominion Television is now available on Roku and all mobile devices. Find us on Google Play, iTunes and on Roku TV simply by searching Dominion Television. Or visit us online at www.dominion.tv. Now tell all your friends and stay tuned. You're watching Dominion Television, your home for faith and kingdom training. Hi, my name is Lynette Dutton and you're watching Ministry Spotlight, Dominion TV's original program where we highlight and spotlight ministries, kingdom business and authors. And I'm so glad that you join us today. I've got my great friend, Apostle Jeff Sanders in studio with me today. Hi, Hello. Apostle. Hello, Lady Lynette. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm so glad. Y'all, we're in Myrtle Beach Studios, and he's on vacation, and yes. he decided to come in and stop by the studios, and it's always good to have you guys around. Yes, amen. <laughs> Likewise. Yeah, so tell us, you've written three books. Yes. And the latest just came out a week ago, maybe? Yes, about a week or so ago. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Yeah. I haven't gotten a chance to read it. I've gotten a few highlights. Okay. But talk to us a little bit about your book. Okay, well, this, this latest book is called Capacity. And this was birthed out of a message I preached probably about five, maybe six years ago. I taught on a uh -huh. message called Capacity. And I wasn't even thinking about writing a book because of them. It was only like about four or five parts to the message. Okay. It wasn't like a long series. Yeah. And so one day the Holy Spirit brought the message back up and he said, you need to start writing about capacity because okay. a lot of people um, misunderstand their assignment. They misunderstand how the kingdom wow. operates. And so basically the, the uh, foundation of that particular message was the king that called the three servants mm -hmm. and he gave each one of them a different talent. And so they all did different things with the talents. But one of the things that the Holy Spirit uh, arrested in me when I read that again is that based on their several ability. Oh. And so in order for him to know what they could handle, mm -hmm. he had to observe them in the yeah. previous season. Okay. And so many times we get upset because we see we like God is blessing them or they're expanding and mm -hmm. they're doing this. And we don't understand that, you know, God gives us what we can handle, not what we want. Come on, that's a big amen right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm passionate about it because, you know, the two servants did what they were supposed to do. Right. The one that had five, he multiplied and got ten. The one that had two, he multiplied his. But the one that had one, he hid it in the earth. And to me, the earth represents the flesh. It is, it is a yes. type of a, us when we have gifts and talents and we don't use it to build the kingdom, build the local church. We go and just bear it in ourselves, mm -hmm. bear it in the earth. And then when God show up, we don't have anything to offer him. But we're wow. jealous of those that have multiplied and increased yeah. their, you know, their abilities. And so that se based on their several ability, it, it, it hit me. And I was like, so there was a season of observation that took place before he entrusted this to him. Mm -hmm. So each one got exactly what the leader felt like they could handle. Right. And that's how God deals with us. And yeah. then, you know, it's a chapter in here, how to increase your capacity. We saw the two servants, how they increased and ended up with more. Yeah. So what I'm hearing you, just a synopsis of, of my view is it matters what we do in our off season. I say that in the book. Oh, do you? <laughs> yes, I do. You're I absolutely right. Yes. What yeah. are you doing in your off season? Yeah. When, when the spotlight's not on you, yes. when, when you're not on the platform, when the mic's not in your hand, yeah. when you're not the one signing the contracts and the deals. Right, right. What were you doing then? Exactly, exactly. Wow. And, and I talk about that. It, it's a chapter in here. Um, I want, let me get it right because I can say it one way, but I want to yeah. make sure I get it. It's a matter of fact, God had me to add this, this to the, I was done. Okay. And the Lord dealt with me and said, you need to put this experience in the book. And it's called growing into the coat God has for you. Ooh. And it comes from the life of Joseph. Yeah. Joseph was called, he, he was shown the dream at 17, mm -hmm. but he didn't step into the fullness of that until I think he was like, um, 34. So, so he had like 17 year process yeah. from when he had the dream until he was in the palace. 
And so that's that in-between time. Mm -hmm. You know, those years when you're being faithful, even when you don't understand why my brothers turned on me, yeah. you know, why Potiphar's wife lied on me, um, <laughs> why I ended up back in the prison, and uh -huh. then they forgot about me. I interpret their dream. and, and not, Yeah, but he was still <laughs> faithful to God. And right. so when the, when the proper time came, they say, it's a guy. You know, he was in the prison, and he interpreted our dream. And so Pharaoh sent for him, and the rest is history. But it's, the, it's that in-between time. That downtime, when, when it don't look like anything is transpiring, what are you doing with your time? What are you doing with your gifts? Are you still serving? Are you still faithful? Or are you just, woe is me? Because mm -hmm. it, is a, it is a process from the promise to Come the on. purpose. See, wow. you got the, God gives yes. us a promise. Yes. Then we, the process includes problems. So we got, <laughs> we, we got promise, we got process, we got problems, and then we got purpose. Yeah. And I talk about that. I highlight that in the life of Joseph. Yeah, okay, y'all are going to bow down to me. But that, that, that dream got him thrown in the pit. Mm. The problem started when he revealed his dream, his destiny. And then we know from the pit to Potiphar's house, oh, all yeah. these coat changes. Because yes. his father gave him a coat of many colors. But he wasn't ready for it because the coat was prophetic of the nations he would impact when he would be in Egypt. Each color represented a nation. And so he wow. had the coat premature. Mm -hmm. Then he ended up in Potiphar house. He had another coat he had to leave behind because she, the <laughs> wife wanted him, right? Yeah. Then he ended up in prison. Yeah. And then, you know, he had that coat. And then finally he got in the palace where he had a coat that he would wear for the rest of his life as a mm. prince, basically. Yeah. And so it's, it's a process. We all love the promise, the prophetic words. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, God gave me a word. What we don't understand is it's not going to happen because you're anointed and because God is giving you a dream. It's going to happen after he has processed you. Mm -hmm. And he the literally, ha exactly, and he has to process the hell out of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has to. That is so good. That yeah. is so good. So I heard something, and I want to say it's a uh, Pastor Cheryl Brady said it. He shows you just enough to say yes. <laughs> yes. Because you know if he would have, in, instead of the picture of uh, his brothers bowing down, if he would have got a picture of the prison or a picture of the pit right. or any of those things, he might not have said yes to the call. <laughs> no, no. Many of us. I, I know. Yeah. Um, I can say it now in hindsight that I would have still said yes, but when you're going through it, you'll be uh, like, yeah. nowhere in the world. Uh -uh. Uh, anybody in their again. right mind would say yes to this right here. Yeah. You have to be a sadist. The, 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 you know what I'm saying? You have to, to say yes yeah. to this. But when, when you mature and you get to the other side, you say, okay, Lord, it was worth it. Yeah. It was worth yeah. it. I, uh, it was a few years after uh, me and Dr. Dutton got married. And, you know, he told me from the get-go he was in ministry, right? Yeah. And my great-grandmother was a minister, but I was a teenager. So it, that, it wasn't nothing registered. Right. And so it was a few years later. And I looked at my sister-in-law and my bishop at the time, and I said, Y'all didn't tell me ministry was like this, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I was kind of implying like, I don't know if I would have said yes if right. you would have gave me the whole story. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and I've heard a lot of first ladies say, you know, it's like I was tricked almost because yeah. if I would have known what all it entails, I would maybe like, no, you know, that's not for yeah. me. But it is a process. And, yeah. and uh, unfortunately, that process is very painful. Yeah, it is very painful. But it, it so, so it is to be a pastor. Whether you're you're the pastor's wife or the pastor or in any kind of church ministry is, but you know it's that way. You know whether you're a doctor, right? I mean, you think of all those years yes. of schooling and all those late hours at you know mm -hmm. residency and right. the the grunt work and you know it doesn't matter what God the call God put on your life and the promises God. That process is stinky. <laughs> it, it is, and you're absolutely right. Any level of success. It's going to take a level of death. And, and it, even I played sports, you know, most of my life. Um, mm -hmm. And and it was a it was a price I had to pay. Right. You know, when when other friends were out doing this and that, I had to be committed to practicing, you yeah. know, and they admired my achievements, but they wouldn't put the work in. Yeah. They, and they so, didn't want to pay the price. Exactly. And that it, that goes for business. That goes mm -hmm. for marriage. That goes for ministry. Yeah. There is a process. And, and sometimes it's that Villa de la Rosa. It's that, that, that way of death, that way of suffering. It's lonely. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, if the Lord would have told me, yes, you're called the pastor, 
but <laughs> people going to lie on you. They're going to walk away from the church. They're going to try to destroy you. If he would have told me all of that process, though, yeah. I might would have been like, Lord, I, I can't deal with yeah. that, you know, but, but it's a price. Much. And he does that to mature us and bring us into that cult that I talk about in that last chapter, because you have to be um, ready to, to put the coat on. The coat is not going to be made to adjust to you. Mm -hmm. God will cut everything he needs to cut off of you so you can fit that coat. And we don't want that coat to fit. We want God to tailor it to us. Yeah. God say, no, I'm going to tailor you to it. Ooh. And, and for him to do that, that means that flesh got to be cut. Mm, and that <laughs> don't feel good. It doesn't feel good <laughs> at all. It doesn't. But I can, I can surely say today, um, without a shadow of a doubt, I am so glad he allowed me to go through what I went through. Mm -hmm. it, it made me who I am as a husband, as a father, as a pastor, as a leader in the Lord's church. And I tell people, I say, yes, a lot of experiences we had were bad. I say, but if you take away your experiences, then we won't have you. Right. Because experience builds us and makes, who, makes us who we are. Mm -hmm. And so that process that Joseph had to go through made him qualified yes. to be the prince of Egypt. Yes. And to, to save the world, basically, because they were coming to him for food. And mm -hmm. so that, that process is what prepares us for the palace. Many of us want to get in the palace premature, but it's mm -hmm. the process that equips you to get there. Right. You know, I, I think it's easier for most people. You know, the people talk about failure and failing forward. And I, was, I think it's a lot easier to fail than it is to succeed. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the expectation, there's no expectations on failure. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> and it's a whole group of failures, you know, because yeah. not because they don't have what it takes. Yeah. It's either they allowed it to break them, the process to mm -hmm. break them, or they just, just didn't have the wherewithal to keep moving. Yeah. And sometimes success is just about keep moving. Yeah. You know, what if Joseph would have got frustrated in the pit and said, you know what, I just want to get back. It. Yeah, it's not <laughs> worth it. But he kept moving forward. Mm -hmm. And um, thank God it was for not only the saving of him, but the saving of his family, many right. lives. Right. Yeah. And God had to work out, the process had to work out some stuff in him. Because, you know, during that time when he had all that time in the pit in the prison to think about what his brothers did, right, right. that he'd be like, wait till I see them again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, wait till they need me. Yeah, bitter. But it worked something out of him to where when they came, he was ready for that redemption. He was ready to forgive and he was ready to help his family, you know, live. Yeah. Because, you know, it was, he had that choice to feed them or not. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of power to have yeah. when somebody sold you out. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> but you know, he, he got the revelation. He said, what you meant for evil, God meant for good, mm. that many lives would be saved. So basically, in a nutshell, he was saying, it is bigger than me, and it's bigger than what you did to me. You know, I had to go through this yeah. because the bigger picture say, if I don't end up in Egypt, not only does Egypt die, the world dies. Right. So it was bigger than, than what you thought. You, you really was launching me into my destiny, and I wasn't mature enough to see it. Mm -hmm. But now I understand mm -hmm. it was for God's plan to come to pass. And a lot of times we don't understand our process, but it's, it's what God is using to launch us into what, because he's saying it's bigger than you. Yeah. It's bigger than your pain. It's bigger than your problems. It's bigger than your past. Mm -hmm. And so he uses that to launch us into the person that we're supposed to be, yeah. that many lives would be saved. So one of the quotes from your book is, God deals with us based on capacity. Right. We know the scripture talks about let us prophesy in proportion to the measure of faith right. or whatever we're doing. And we understand that that measure is metron. It means that there is a certain amount. There's a certain um, impartation mm. that God has given every person. And so many people, because they don't understand God yeah. deals with us based on capacity, They'll try to take your job. Oh, I, that looks easy enough. Yeah. I can do it. it does, it's not about easy. It's about the, the metron, mm -hmm. it, the grace to do this. Yeah. And so God deals with us based on the metron, what we're called to do and the grace that we have to do it. And yeah. not because we like what somebody else do. What did God give you? How much of it do you have? Mm -hmm. I talk about in the book that God deals with us based on uh, measure and capacity. And I said, look at it like this. There are some people that have like a gallon jug capacity. Right. 
you know, and then there are some people that have like a swimming pool capacity. They're going to do more. Yeah. And then we have like the Billy Grahams and the, the Oral Roberts. They have like an ocean capacity yeah. because their reach touches the world. And yeah. not only in their generation, it outlives them. It and so their metron is greater, so they do greater mm -hmm. things. I, I say in the book, it's not that God loves them more or, you know, they're, you know, more saved or something like that. It's because they have a greater measure. They have a greater, capacity. their capacity is greater and so therefore those with a greater capacity will get greater things done not that what we do without that capacity not effective and needful mm -hmm. but if you got to understand everybody is not a Billy Graham oh. only one in a lifetime yeah and everybody is not an oil robbers a Benny Hinn only one in a lifetime right and so I talk about being the best that, that we can be, you know, mm -hmm. and, and working within the capacity that you have. Don't, don't try to be somebody else. Be the best you, you can be and, and maximize it. And I even talk about how to increase your capacity because you can if you're faithful yeah. and you do the things that you need to do. Awesome. Yeah. So who needs this book? Everybody needs this <laughs> book, especially pastors, because... Yeah. Um, I get transparent in the book in that fitting that coat part because when we started out, I was like, God, I am I, I'm anointed to teach the word. I'm living holy. Uh, I got a fair amount of Bible knowledge and understanding. <laughs> Surely this church is going to explode. Yeah, I was telling people about the first year after the first year, I expect to have at least about 500 people. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I had a promise. Apostle, I know if it was just based on your teaching. <laughs> and, and you and Lady Michelle as, as people, you would. Praise God. It's, it's but, all those other people. that. Right. Is, <laughs> yeah, but, but little did I know because I had never yeah. been taught that there is a process and that you have to grow into this cult. You mm -hmm. have to grow into this mountain. You don't start out here and it's not based on mm -hmm. gifting. It's not based on talent. You have to be processed to mm -hmm. it. And so everybody needs this book. I don't care if you're in business. I don't care if you're in the athletic arena. If you're in ministry, every pastor, because I was looking at pastors that were starting their churches around the same time we started. Right. And a year later, they're over 1,000. They're over 500. And I'm looking at us like, what is going on? What am on? I doing wrong? Right. And I'm like, God, do you love them more than you love us? It seemed like that we're just in a holding pattern. We, yeah. can't, we can't seem to get this thing right. And it wasn't about God loving them more or them being more important or significant right. it was about my process yeah if God would allow me to step into everything that I wanted to or what he had for me at that time I would have destroyed it and it would have destroyed me yeah. because I was not mature enough to step into that coat yeah um, my brother-in-law Bishop Jim Dutton um, I can remember growing up I grew up in his his church when I say grow up from the time I was a, a teenager okay. until I was almost 40 and he said, if God allows the ministry to grow faster than the man, Say that. the ministry Say. will crush the man. It will crush them, absolutely. And you see that reading headlines. Yes. You know, people falling into sin or, or committing suicide or, you know, just walking away from everything. Right, right. And it's because the ministry grew faster. That machine grows faster, it, and it will absolutely crush the life out that of is so a good. person. And you have to feed a machine. Yes, you do. And many times the machine will be fed off a of compromise <sighs> because mm -hmm. either the machine is going to grow it or God is going to do it. Mm -mm. And so I found That's out good. watching people over the years, yeah. it was one thing that scared me um, early in my walk with God. And especially when God started elevating me in ministry, yeah. I would always refer back to the life of Samson. I say, man, Samson was a strong man. Yes. The anointing would come on him. I say, but you never see Samson have a relationship with the Lord. Mm. He, you, the only time we see Samson talking to God is when he wanted his hair to grow back to a, avenge himself, right? And so he had this strong calling and anointing, but never spent time with God. And the Holy Spirit began to deal with me about if the anointing in you is not great, <sighs> then the anointing that comes on you will crush you. Yeah. And That's so good. I started saying, Lord, I never want to be a strong man with a weak spirit. Yes, that's so good. And I never want what comes on me to crush me. I don't want to be a, a public success and a private failure. Mm. Failing in my marriage, failing with my kids, right. you know, just failing in life will look good in the pulpit. Yeah. And that's what happens. You said it, that that, that machine mm -hmm. 
it will destroy you. And that, many times people, they ministry take off and they haven't developed. And so they haven't grown where their anointing can sustain it. Yeah. And so either it's going to destroy them or it is going to be so much compromise and so much stuff feeding that machine mm -hmm. that it's no longer ministry. Yeah. And so That's this a sad book, place to be. Too. It is. It's very sad. And unfortunately, we have lost a lot of great people because yes, we they were trying to sustain something with a gift. And only the process and the anointing can sustain mm. what God is doing. That's and so, so that true. is so true what you said. Yeah. It's powerful. Another quote before we end is guarding against capacity thieves. Oh, my goodness. That one really, I was like, <laughs> I've, I've got to hear about this. Yeah. That, that was something else the Lord dealt with me because he was like, look at the time that you live in. Because, you know, when we, we came back to the Lord, my wife and I, you know, 19, 20 year old kids, we didn't have no cell phones, Facebook, know, Instagram, right? Twitter. We didn't have all of this stuff, you know, and it, it was like, OK, so serving God was easy. It was. It was a lot, it was easier. A lot easier. And now there are so many distractions that we have to contend with. I mean, social media can become a, it is an addiction. Yes. I think they even have um, have labeled it as um, I, I think it's like social media addictions or something like that, where people can't live without their phone. Yeah. It's an addiction. So that can become a capacity thief. You're spending more time um, seeing how many likes you got. You know, you're spending more time seeing what they're Preach posting. Apostle. Yeah, I'm serious. It can become it a capacity thief. Yes. Um, TV program. Some people are binge watch. They just Binging. yeah, they just binge on it all day long. Their favorite show, you know. And so they do things that basically pull them away from God. And anytime you're pulled away from God, your capacity begins to dwindle. Ooh. And so you may have started out at a mm. swimming pool, but you're going to end out like a little um, cup full <laughs> because you have a lot. And then um, offense, different mm. things um, steal your capacity and wrong yeah. relationships. You need people that. that fuel you. Like I, I was mm. telling you that your husband, I stirred me up. The other last yeah. week because yeah. your anointing fuels me. It, it stirs me up. And so a lot of people are around the wrong people. Their tribe um, is wrong. It's just wrong for them. Not that the mm -hmm. people are bad, but mm -hmm. they're bad for them. And right. so when you're hanging around people that are on a different wavelength than you, it will yeah. begin to diminish your capacity. So there are a lot of, you know, capacity yes. things, but those are a few of them. You know? I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Now I'm going to tell you guys, Everybody needs to get this book, Capacity. Amen. How can we order it, Apostle? You can go to Amazon. Amazon, you can get it in the Kindle version. You can get it um, in the paperback. Or you can reach out to me personally. Um, my information is go to the Word Life Center, intl.org. And my personal email is there, Pastor Jeff Sanders. Um, you can reach out to me that way. Or the quickest way is you can go to Amazon and just order it from them. Or you can get it um, directly from me. If you are connected with me through social media, you can inbox me, send me your information, and I'll respond and tell you how you can get it. And I'm going to tell you guys real quick, if you're in the Kannapolis area you on a Sunday, you need to visit Apostle Sanders Church. Amen. And, and you need to... Uh, Sit at the table and feast because that's exactly what you do Amen. when you break the bread. And nice um, it's an amazing presence. You've got an amazing people there. And we're excited about all God's doing in and through you guys and Amen. all the books. If order capacity, but he's got Occupy. Occupy. And the um, other one, Dominion, that's no longer in print. But um, Occupy and Capacity. I like the name of that other one, though. Yeah. We might have to get a reprint. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Occupy is a revision okay, of um, Dominion. I, I added it. some more to it and just revised it. So Perfect. Occupy is all about the kingdom. And we're all about the kingdom. So make sure you get both of Apostle Sanders' books and follow him on social media. Stop by, find out more about his church and his ministry there. And thank you guys for tuning in to Ministry Spotlight today with Apostle Jeff Sanders. Thank you so much thank for being for on today. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. I can't thank wait you. to read all of it. Amen. <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Hi, I'm Lynette Dutton, one of the co-owners here at Dominion Television. And we have an exciting uh, program. It's called Ministry Spotlight. And what we do is we have authors, kingdom business owners, kingdom coaches, and kingdom ministries that we feature, we highlight right here on Dominion Television. Yes, it's a program that is streamed globally. 
in 2020 alone, over 72 nations were tuning in right here to Dominion TV. Don't you want to be platformed and promoted right here on a global network? I want you to contact me today, info at dominion.tv. The number and information is right below and find out how you can be the next person on Ministry Spotlight. Thank you so much for tuning into this broadcast today. Listen, I need to share a few things with you before we get into the meat of this broadcast. First off, we need you to like and share this broadcast. Right now, as you're listening to me, go ahead, click that share button, share it to your news feed, share it to some groups that you're in. I know you're in those women's Bible studies. I know you're in the men's prayer breakfast group. Come on, share it. They need this word too. Listen, did you know that when you like, comment, and share our broadcast, it helps our algorithms? Simply put, that means that we're able to reach more people than just what we know on Facebook. When you like and share this broadcast, even tag someone, it helps it get a little bit further. And we want to carry the gospel of the kingdom into the world. Did you also know that if you go and watch a replay on Facebook, it also helps people's algorithms? So, say you're doing the dishes, say you're washing your hair, whatever it is, I need you to turn this video on later, watch the replay, put it aside, do what you're doing, and help us spread this a little bit further. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and we pray that your lives are blessed. Hey guys, Dr. Dutton here, and I wanted to take a moment just to encourage you to become a partner with this ministry. You know, we're reaching the world with the gospel of the kingdom of God. Google told us that last year in 2020, from our website and from what we're doing, we reached over 70 countries. In fact, 72 countries are logging on and watching this kind of ministry, this kind of teaching. And I can't keep doing this without you, especially as the demand grows bigger and bigger. I need partners to help us carry this gospel of the kingdom of God around the world. So if you have an ear to hear what we're saying and your baby is leaping from this word we're teaching, I need you on a monthly basis to partner with us and help us continue to carry the gospel of the kingdom of God around the globe and let's build faith in the people of God, all right? I'm looking for your help today.